Head and neck trauma remain one of the worst single injuries that we can experience as Formula One drivers. As a result, um, the helmets have been developed extremely lightly in recent years. Um, and you can just feel, I mean, now it's like 1,200 or 1,300 grams. And that's, that's just amazing considering that they, all the things that they put in here, the carbon, the visor, and all the rest of it. The helmet, once a simple formality, now radical technology to keep up with both safety measures and the demanding environment that is a Formula One Grand Prix event. We experience extreme g-forces in cornering, so already for, for my neck muscles that's a big help, but not only that, it helps extremely in the case of an accident. The energy that it needs to absorb is greater than that when a bullet is fired from a gun. The outer part of the helmet is made from an incredibly strong shell of carbon fibre and Kevlar. And this is designed to protect the driver's head in the impact. The inside of the helmet is a dense expanded polystyrene foam that can absorb all the energy. Quite amazingly also, they put a lot of effort into wind tunnel testing with the helmets because it's such a big surface of the actual car that even this is optimized for downforce and for drag and everything. So all these little spoilers and winglets on my helmet, they've been, uh, they've been done in the winter. And then finally also such details as our little uh, windshield, you know, that's also done in the wind tunnel um, because that also optimizes the airflow over the car and also over my head and it reduces buffeting or movement or something that I could get if the wind doesn't flow smoothly. So as you can see, even in the area of the helmet, there's a constant push to optimize the safety.